So hey everybody, Shelby and Trisha, we're back again this week. And as promised, we uh, wanted to share with you um, some a new gentleman that I met, Ken Carfagno. Ken Carfagno, right? That's how I say it? Yeah, Ken Carfagno. <laughs> um, and Ken, you own a cleaning company. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll talk about what we want you to talk about today. Okay, sure. Be glad to. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Trisha. Uh, name's Ken Carfagno. I am a former mechanical engineer, so I get kind of geeked out on science stuff, which it's a good time to do that right now. <laughs> and went from engineering to cleaning 15 years ago. That's a whole nother interview in itself, so we won't dive into that. But as far as cleaning, I've, been, I've operated my company, Carfagno Cleaning Incorporated, in upstate New York for the first 14 years. And our family wanted to come back home to the Philly area. So we moved back here in 2018. We sold our first business and been in the reboot stages for the past, you know, six months plus. And so Shelby, that's how I came to meet you. I think I first met you at a local networking group called NGIV actually about okay. a couple yeah. months ago. And then I met you more recently in our other group. And Trisha, I just met virtually now, but her name <laughs> Her name is already renowned. I've already mentioned her on a previous <laughs> podcast of mine called The Solo Cleaning School. So I'm so excited to meet you, Ken. <laughs> so so I, I guess you, you guys want to talk some cleaning today, some tips for your, for your audience? Yeah, I mean, when you and I had our one-on-one -on -one last week, I was really um, surprised. I mean, I, I thought that some of the stuff that I was doing and, and my disinfecting was um, enough. And I mean, not that we're... I don't want to put any people in panic mode by any means, but I was, I was educated by you. And so I thought it might be nice for you to just kind of share with me okay. and Tricia. And I know you actually have um, a link that we'll attach later on. You have a, a full training on um, how to clean properly and, and we'll share that, but you have uh, nine mistakes that people m make during, you know, disinfecting. So I figured, why don't you go over those with us and share with us what those are? Sure. Sure. Um, um, and a little, oh, little background to this. Look at a little strange sound kick back there. Look um, at the microphone. Look, look at yeah. this. <laughs> I was just, just adjusting my gain. Yeah, so there's a little bit of background to this. Is As everything started shutting down, I was fortunate to get a waiver and to stay on the list to be able to continue working. They valued, the governor valued our business as essential. So I was thankful for that. Mm. But during that time, I was also home a lot. And I was trying to find something just like you ladies are doing mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to serve the community. What could I do? What do I know that other people could learn from and people are freaking out in their homes? What could I teach them that could ease their worries? And I didn't think cleaning tips would be, would be the most exciting, but what about something that could kill coronavirus? And I really didn't know, I wasn't well versed in this. And so I went to town for about three weeks deep into the research, deep into the CDC and the EPA and all of these websites of reputable, you know, science, scientific things and papers. And I was trying to understand how to do this correctly. And I can just share in my personal experience, and this is kind of the tagline I use in what I've been putting out to, you know, to help the community is 15 years of professional house cleaning 90% 90, 90 of people are disinfecting incorrectly. And that's a tough statement to really stomach because there is so many ways to screw this up. And I initially said, well, there's five ways. And I had five ways. And then I'm going through them on Facebook Live. And I'm like, oh, there's a sixth. Oh, a seventh. And by the time I was done, I had nine. So I'd be glad to cover the nine. I know we don't, we want to keep this short, you know, keep this uh, under, you know, probably 15 minutes or so, but I'd be glad to go over the nine or if you have additional questions you want to kick off first. But why don't you share with us the, the nine and then um, we can go ahead and see based off of what you share with us if we have additional questions. Okay. Okay. Great. So the nine mistakes and they're in order and that's not accidental. Uh, remember former engineer. So you, <laughs> the first one, first mistake, not fully cleaning the surface first. What, what, like, what does that mean, Ken? Okay, so here you are, um, you powerful mom, and you got your like, you got your wipe, and it says 
you know, Clorox disinfectant or Lysol, and you're like, cool, I'm going to take that wipe, and I'm just going to start wiping my counter, and I'm good to go. You're not. <laughs> That's the problem. And it's clearly spelled on the back. It says clean first. And I won't get all geeky on you here, but <laughs> Trish is probably like, go, tell me. <laughs> <don't." laughs> so if, if, if I were to, if, if I had a surface, and okay, I'll just grab a little notebook I have here. If I have a surface, and we were to zoom in, like zoom, 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 super on the surface to the point where you can actually see the dirt and you can see them like growling at you, okay? Well, there's something called surface tension. Dirt is, is chemically bound to a surface. It doesn't, so if you just take your hand and do that, it doesn't come off. Sometimes it takes heat. Sometimes it takes time and chemistry. Sometimes it takes agitation inside of a solution. So when you put some kind of a water solution with chemistry on it, that dirt starts to like emulsify and starts to, the surface tension breaks and it starts to come from the surface into the dirt, into this, this water, this water and surfactant cleaner. Okay. That's probably too much detail. But essentially <laughs> the, the dirt comes off the surface and now you can wipe it off. And my, and kind of the tagline I'm using for this is dirt cannot be moved. It's gotta be removed. Mm. And so you got you to gotta release the dirt from the surface. And some of that dirt, like soap scum, is hard to get off. You have to use some good chemistry. And that's where a professional cleaner comes in. You have to know how to clean right. You remove the dirt, and now you have a clean surface. And, if, and same thing goes with your hands. Well, I'll just put sanitizer on after I went to the grocery store. Have, have at it. It's better, than, it's better than bathing in Corona, okay? But – what you really want to do is you want to take the dirt off the surface of your skin and then sanitize it. It's the same concept. So that's the first so, thing. So are you saying that you should use like soapy water towel first, wipe down, then do the Clorox because you've already, you want the water or is it more, can you do a, a dry paper towel, wipe it down and then use the Clorox? It all depends on the dirt. You have to understand the dirt that you have and what surface there's different, different examples. Let's a okay. kitchen counter. Maybe you have just some oil residue from cooking. You want, might want to use a little degreaser and some warm water, and you want to clean the surface and fully remove the dirt as it's released into the water and then pull it completely off and, and then dry it, and now you have a clean surface. Now you take that wipe. So that's an, let's get into the next mistakes because the first okay. one is you got to clean it first. Okay. The second one is you have to choose a registered disinfectant. And what that means is if you, I don't have, I usually have examples when I was doing videos, I have like six disinfectants on my, I'm pulling them up and I'm like, if you look at the back of the label of any, dis, of any product, at the very bottom, like, you know, my water, but on the back of it, you'd see a little EPA logo and it'll say EPA registration 777 whatever. If it has that EPA registration, that means that the EPA says, yes, this is a registered disinfectant. Therefore, whatever, it, whatever claims are on this label, it will actually do if the directions are followed. And so you have to have, if you want to make sure you're killing stuff, this is, there's multiple things here, but make sure it's EPA registered. Okay. And I've seen okay. ones, I've seen Lysol brand that you just, oh, well, that must be a disinfectant. It's Lysol. I've seen Lysol that doesn't have EPA registration number because they're not meant. Um, I can't, I, there's someone I know that made this mistake too, where they got Clorox, the Clorox product. I'm just going to use that for disinfecting. It's Clorox, it's bleach. And they made, you know, spray bottles of it. And I actually looked at it when I was there, I looked at the bottle and it actually says not for disinfecting on the label. And on the back, it says, um, there's no registration. So this is a really mm. important the third I one. People that all the time because not all yeah. not all bleach is a disinfectant. So sometimes you're just yeah. staking things for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Wait till I blow your mind with bleach in a few minutes. So that's one of the mistakes. <laughs> Number three, not selecting the right disinfectant for the right pathogen. Pathogen, we get, you know, into the bio, bio molecular level. Okay. Is you've got enveloped viruses, non-enveloped viruses. Um, uh, grain, a gram negative, gram positive bacteria, fungicidal, tubercularcidal, all these different pathogens, all are bad. Okay. A great example I use in the course I, I taught here is parent, we have five kids and 
you know, we have many nights where the kids are throwing up. Well, not many, but kids are throwing <laughs> up and there's some kind of a stomach bug. That's the rotavirus, which is a non-enveloped virus. It's hard to kill. And I've been using a disinfectant for years after the kids throw up, spraying it. And more recently, as I was really digging into this science, I looked, I, I read the claims in the back of the one I was using, and it kills all the enveloped stuff, the H1N1, the flu, it'll kill Corona, no problem, but it, it doesn't kill the rotavirus. So I was using a product that's registered, but it doesn't make a claim and it won't kill the thing I wanted it to kill. So that's, one, that's a huge mistake I made. Yeah. And that's the, that's the third one. No wonder they were sick every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm killing, I mean, I'm killing the flu, but I wasn't killing the stomach bug. Um, so number four, we're a third of the way through, we'll speed this up. Not following the directions on the label. Dilute correctly and wet the surface long enough. They're spelled, the directions are on the back of every label spelled out. So you have the EPA label. Mm -hmm. That's your comfort. You know you're okay. And now you have to see, well, what do I, how long do I do it? And it, if it's pre-wet, if it's a wipe, you don't have to worry about dilution. But if you're buying, if you have a gallon of bleach, or you have a gallon of something else, it might say, well, ble you know, bleach is four ounces per gallon. And you have to follow that exact dilution because that's what the EPA certified the product for. I'll just throw in an extra ounce. That's, that's stupid. I'll, I'll put an ounce less. There's a, it was tested at that number. You don't mess with it. And the second thing is the, the contact time. This is vital. If it says sanitizes in this example, sanitizes in three minutes and disinfects in 10 minutes. This is just an example. Sanitizes means it's bringing the level of pathogens down to the level acceptable to the human body. Disinfecting is psh, done, killed. I, I don't mess with sanitizing in this season that we're in. I'm like, stop sanitizing because it, it can regrow. Like just kill everything, but kill everything you need to kill. Mm -hmm. And usually it's like 10 minutes, 10 minute contact time. And so if you spray and you, you got to keep the surface fully wet with the registered disinfectant for the right pathogen, and now it's, you've got, you wet, you've cleaned that surface, you've wet that surface. And for, if it says 10 minutes, it's gotta be fully wet for 10 minutes. Oh, would dry. I didn't check it after five minutes, it dried. Well, is it good enough, Ken? Yeah, it sanitized it. Three minutes is sanitized, five minutes you did it, so you sanitized it. If it's fully wet for nine minutes and 59 seconds, you've sanitized it. You haven't disinfected it. Again, the EPA registers this for 10 minutes. So don't mm -hmm. give me, well, I did it for nine minutes and 58 seconds. So that's the bit that, that's probably the biggest mistake is they're just spraying it. They're using wipes that don't stay wet very long. And if it says three minutes and it stays wet for one minute, you may have to use three wipes three different times, but you've got to follow the directions. That's number four. Number five, not using chemicals correctly. Okay, Trish, are you ready for bleach? <laughs> I'm there's ready. Some, there's something called a half life. Mm -hmm. Their chemicals degrade over time. Shelby's like, I'm like, where are you okay, Shelby? <laughs> uh, I am, I am. No, this is one of them that blew my mind. Yeah. They're, they're bleach. Yeah. Bleach has a, it's very unstable, very unstable, especially in sunlight. If you ever notice, bleach comes in an opaque white bottle. The sunlight cannot mm -hmm. penetrate. Bleach in a, if you, a bleach by the gallon has a shelf life of one year. So don't keep bleach longer than one year. And I'll just mix bleach. It's four ounces per 32. So you get a trigger spray, 32 ounces. Yeah. You put four ounces of bleach in there. And you've got a potent disinfectant. Bleach, absolutely. Especially some of the ones I, um, like the germicidal, the professional grade. Some of this Clorox stuff can kill a broad range. But big but here, right, Shelby? Yep. Is that yep. bleach, once it's diluted in water, has 24 hours until it's useless. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I right. didn't know that. So my bottle's been made and I've been using it for days and I, I right. had no idea. That's part of the 90%. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big concern because you're exactly, you're, sp you're leaving it in a bottle. It, yeah. it degrades quickly. Yeah. So you got to make a new batch every day. And I bought a, I bought a disinfectant that's commercial grade. It's amazing. And in the directions, it clearly states make a new batch after each use. I'm like, oh no. I called the manufacturer Spartan Chemical the other day and I got clarity on that. Like even some of the labels you have to even- mm -hmm. Try to- um, mm -hmm. And they explained to me, 
no, you're okay. That was meant if you use that in a bucket, an open bucket. If you put it in, a, okay. if you put it in a closed trigger spray system, it's good for a week. So my own disinfectant, which is very powerful, I have to make a new batch personally every week. But yeah. I go through it faster than that. Okay, so that was the big one. That's number was that five, number six. Now we're getting into you know we've killed them properly. Now we're getting into some of the things that are on the backside of this, like. Kind of, this is like the side effects of the drugs in a way. We okay. talked about what we, we've picked the right drug. Now let's look at the side effects. So number six is cross contamination from rags or from not wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. So you got this rag, and I disinfected this one, shh, spraying this one, wiped it, take the rag, and boom. Yeah. So you get a wipe, and you hit seventeen light switches with one wipe because it's still wet. Yeah, but you picked up the pathogens from the one and re and moved them to the other. Same thing with like wearing gloves in a grocery store or whatever, and, and you touch something, it doesn't get in your skin, and then you touch something else. So people all over the place are cross-contaminating. Yep, right. So, cross -con so paper towels are healthy because it's single use throughout. Wipes are healthy. I would say just use the wipe, fully wet it so it stays wet long enough, and then get rid of it. Don't be afraid to go through a thing of wipes to do it properly. Okay. And towels are fine. I take, I'll show you this real quick. I have an example I can show you how to do this. Um, here's a microfiber that I, that I like. Yep. And so if you take it and you fold it twice, you okay. now have one, two, three, four surfaces. Turn it, flip it the other side, do the same thing. Yep. And you end up with eight. I do this all the time. One towel can have eight cleaning surfaces. Okay. So that's really useful. Okay, yeah. number yeah. seven. This is where I lose most people, but it's <laughs> important. It's down the list. It's, it's using the wrong pH for surface and damaging it. When I say pH, this is a chemistry mm -hmm. thing. There's alkaline and there's acid. I'm not going to dig too much into this, but let's just say stuff like bleach, um, ammonium, those are alkaline and they tend to damage surface finishes like paint or um, uh, polyurethane or like this, what's on the top of the hardwood, hardwood floor and some of the, um, the surface finishes on, on some of the kitchen granite or marble. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. What about granite and that? What are you? Yeah, you so, you, so you don't wanna use an alkaline. So I got this product that's great for killing things but you spray it on a light switch and it, you see drips going down the wall because it's mm -hmm. fading the paint mm -hmm. right. so you don't you don't want to use an alkaline and then a acid like a um accelerated hydro hydrogen peroxide it's a really great disinfectant but it can damage rock it can that can okay. it can mess mm -hmm. up plastics and rock and so granite marble so you don't want to do that so in the case where you're you're not sure Go neutral, get a neutral one. So the one I have is pH neutral. So I'm just playing it safe. So that's important. You don't want to you don't want to kill the pathogen, but then end up killing the surface. Right. <laughs> um, what's the neutral one, Ken? What would a so one that most people probably have around the house? If if you if you got any any alcohols, um, oh, yeah. I should I should yeah, <laughs> yeah. So but not not things that have flavoring in them. No. Um, <laughs> You no, can uh, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is fantastic um, at seventy percent mixture, and it'll kill Corona in thirty seconds. That's usually and, that's my go-to rubbing alcohol. Usually, and that's that's neutral. Yeah. And grain alcohol, ethanol, um, also does the trick. So those are okay. two neutral ones. And I won't get sciency on you, but you can you can just type in whatever product you have, mm -hmm. and type in SDS after that, and it yeah. says safety data sheet, and it'll open up a big nerdy science Handworm. document <laughs> and then then just do google find just do find within that document pH. type in ph okay and okay. it'll show you the ph and you want you want something between six and eight okay um cool. number okay. number eight never mix chemicals it could kill you okay. literally yeah. there have um if you take something that's a very high alkaline a very high acid and you mix them it works great in a volcano like one of those volcanoes at school Right. But there have been janitors, this is true and it's scary, but there have been janitors that have been found dead in janitor closets yeah. because they mixed toilet bowl cleaner, high acid, 
mm-hmm. with bleach, high yeah. alkaline. And when the two mix together, they release a lot of toxic fumes and, and heat. And so in my video, I, I say, if you know what you're doing, don't mix chemicals. If you don't know what you're doing, don't mix chemicals. Just yeah. never mix chemicals. Never do right. it. It's stupid. That's number eight. So that one's, you know, it's a mistake because you don't want to be dead. Right, right. <laughs> Kill the pathogens, not yourself. That's a really big mistake to make. <laughs> it's number eight. It's number eight in this list, but maybe it should be one. Um, and then number nine. Yeah, exactly. Number nine is not fully cleaning the surface after you disinfect. And this depends on the type of chemical you choose. Now, there are botanical ones that have like thyme or lemongrass oils in them that are effective, but they have to have a registered label, right? If they're registered and they're essential oil, then you can spray on a kitchen counter or on a food, a food, food sanitation area or where kids play. And you could just spray them, let it kill, like clean it first, spray it, and then just wipe and leave. Or just let it go. You can spray alcohol on it where you where you're gonna eat, where you're gonna prepare your food and spray yeah. it and let it kill and just wipe it, you're fine. But if you have anything that m- most of the disinfectants are chemical and the chemical is literally a pesticide, like they're killing pests, they're a pesticide. Mm-hmm. And so they're toxic. And so you you have to clean the surface, wipe it off, disinfect the surface clean it again to get the toxic stuff off. Now you have a clean, safe surface right. again. And so that doesn't change if you've disinfected properly. But again, that's a health risk. So that's why it's listed at the bottom. So those are the nine mistakes. And I'll just ask, have either of you ever been guilty of any of those nine? Yes. Yeah. So yes. this is, I have Mul- two. Multiple of them. <laughs> <laughs> can, 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 you, can you see how we can get to 90% of people pretty quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So any follow-ups on this? Like are you guys like. No, what, feeling- I, what I'm excited to say is, is that with this recording and it getting posted, um, you're going to be available to us again on Thursday at yeah. one. So hopefully some people will watch this and then call or not call, but zoom in on Thursday and they may have questions based off of what you shared. Now you um, have a website and you actually have a podcast you do and you're very involved um, in the cleaning world. I know that you're um, working with a pharmacy that you're actually helping rate their products for them. Um, So why don't you just give some contact information for yourself in case people can't join us on Thursday, but they have questions for you. Yeah, absolutely. Just go to my website, carfagnercleaning.com, which maybe you could post that in wherever this this video yeah. goes. And if you go over to, if you go to that website, I have a section called cleaning tips where I, I post my monthly blogs and there's all kinds of little nerdy information. I try to keep it funny and fun so that it's not boring. Right. And, and then the most recent one I have, you'll see that there's um, a short little video on these nine mistakes. And if you're interested you can click on that. It'll just ask you for your email, which I don't sell or need to sell people. I don't call you. I just, I put you on email newsletter and you just get a cleaning tip each month for me. And then you, you could, um, again, go watch the whole free course on these nine mistakes. Trisha's signing up as soon as we get yeah. off this call. You, yeah. She is going to be receiving that newsletter. And- <laughs> Who want that? Come on. I agree. I agree. So, like I said, I, I all- met Ken and I was like, I, I got to get him out in front of everybody. So. Oh, you're, you're so kind. I mean, it, I'm, I'm amazed at this time in our, in our, I guess, in our climate and in, in the season that we're in, where cleaning and so many industries like this have always been in the background. Mm-hmm. You know, the it, this professional athletes and the entertainers, they get the credit. Realtors, maybe sometimes, but the, I mean, face it, there's a lot of industries that just are in the background. They never get, they, they never come into the light, but then all of a sudden when they're needed, how important is your garbage man right now? How oh, important, yeah. if you have a leak in your kitchen, that plumber, you know, or your house is dirty, you wanna learn how to kill stuff, disinfecting it. And there's nurses and doctors, I mean, everyone, it, it's giving perspective, I think, that we've needed. I mean, there's, there's definitely positives coming out of this. Well, and again, I'm glad that we spoke with you because soon, I mean, hopefully sooner than later, Ken, we are going to be back to being essential in real estate. And we are going to have sellers that are putting their houses on the market with buyers coming in and they're going to be concerned. We know that. And we're going to have systems in place in regards to 
safely bringing buyers in and we're going to have you know things available for sellers to say this is the expectation for the buyers to walk through your house but now we've got you as a tool to you know say to them okay you know you had five showings in this open house this is how we can get your house disinfected now afterwards so i mean you're just right. a wealth right. of knowledge and and it's um it's a great opportunity for us to have our clients get acquainted with your services so that they know mm. with what exactly to do. So I really thank you for taking the time that you did today. Um, and like I said, I'm excited to see if we can maybe get some people to hop on on, on Thursday now that they have the chance to watch this um, and see if we can get you some questions. Absolutely, <laughs> feel free to write them all down and I'll be ready to go. And I appreciate the endorsement and the trust you're placing in me. And I'd be glad to help any of your real estate clients out. I've been doing, I've been working with realtors for 15 years. And I know, and I can uh, see why. I can see why you are a valuable allied resource. So well, thank, thank you, you so much for that. Great. And uh, we didn't get a chance to see any of your little ones running around in the background, but I hope that you enjoy your day with them today. We've got a little bit of sun for a little bit of time. So hopefully you get an opportunity to get them outside and running around. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Shelby.